Hello, my name is Aspen and welcome to another reading vlog. So as you can tell from the title, today's reading vlog is about one man and one man only, and that is Mr. Riley Sager. So I read his two most recent releases when they came out. And I really enjoy both of them, which I know is very unpopular, especially on booktube in general. So knowing that he has another release coming out in June, I've been really wanting to get caught up on his backlist. And as soon as I started my channel, it was an idea for, oh, that'd be a good reading vlog someday to read the four books you haven't read yet. Today is that someday, we're finally doing it. I still need to read, like I said, his four oldest books. And we are starting the vlog today because I am about to start a buddy read of Final Girls with Ashley from Dumb Blonde Books. And if you don't know who Ashley is, if you don't subscribe to her, I don't know what you're doing. She's hilarious and she took a little break but she's back. She's so funny. Her editing is so funny. So you should definitely go check her out, follow her. Well, I forget what platform I'm on. Subscribe to her. I posted my May TBR and she commented about doing a buddy read and asked if I'd be interested. And I was like, what a silly question. Of course I'm interested in a buddy read. So we are going to be starting this today. And then once I finish Final Girls, I'm going to read the other three in the order of publication, which I believe would be Final Girls, then The Last Time I Lied, then Lock Every Door, I'm out of hands, and then Home Before Dark. And I realize I'm holding the books in my hands, so I could just look up the year they were published, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to say this is correct. I don't know if it is or not, but I think this is the order. That's the plan for this vlog. I, like I said, I have already read Survive the Night, which I don't own a physical copy of, and then The House Across the Lake. I gave them both four stars. I really enjoyed both of them, but I definitely liked The House Across the Lake better than Survive the Night. And this is where my whole not giving anything other than full star ratings gets confusing because I would definitely rank this one above Survive the Night, but they got the same star rating. Before I get into it, I thought it might be fun for me to make a little prediction on what I think my ranking of the six books will be once I'm finished reading the four I haven't read yet and compare it and we'll do a final ranking at the end of the video. Just spitballing here, just throwing some things out here. This is how I think I'll rank the books once I'm finished. So very controversially, I'm going to put Home Before Dark in last place. Here's the thing. If you're new here, which if you are, hello, hi, glad you found the channel. I don't really like haunted house books. And I have tried asking if Home Before Dark and Lock Every Door are typical haunted house stories because in my head, that's what they are. And everybody was just like, Aspen, just read the books. We can't tell you. So thanks a lot for the help. Um, but that means that both of these in my head are still just typical haunted house books. And because this one takes place in a house, I feel like it'll be my least favorite. And I'm putting Lock Every Door right above it because it takes place in a luxury apartment. So at least we're getting a change of scenery. But I just don't know if these are going to work for me because I, I just don't vibe with haunted house books. So they're going in sixth and fifth place. In fourth place, I think we're gonna have Final Girls. This is only because I've read one other Final Girl book and I didn't really like it. And I feel like that's really warped my idea of the trope. So just in my head, I just immediately go, oh yeah, I don't like Final Girl tropes. I've read one book with a Final Girl trope, but I've already branded myself as not a fan. So we'll see if I like this one any better than the other one that I've read but I feel like this will be fourth. And then in third, I feel like it's going to be the last time I lied. And the only reason I'm putting this one at the top of like the four I haven't read yet is just because I think this takes place in a summer camp setting, which I know I could read the inside jacket and tell you that for sure, but I'm not going to because I'd like to be surprised. But in my head, I think this takes place at a summer camp, which gives good vibes to me. So I'm going to put it in third. And I feel like Survive the Night and House Across the Lake will remain my top two favorites. 
only because I feel like the general consensus is that you either really love his first four books or you really love his newer ones. And because I really like the newer ones, I'm concerned that I'm not really gonna like these, which is a little risky that I'm even filming this vlog because if I end up hating all four of these, it's gonna be such a downer. But we're, we're moving forward with it. You guys know I'm not shy about telling you if I don't like books, so honestly, I don't care if I post a vlog where I hate everything, but hopefully that won't be the case. But I do still feel like the house across the lake will remain my favorite. This is what I anticipate my ranking to be, so we will see once I finish how close I actually am to the final product. But there you go, that's my prediction. We're getting started today with Final Girls, so I will let you know when I have an update on this one. Hi! So, as you just saw, I was just out at dinner. My friend and I went to this Mexican place that just opened up. We got drinks, and I got this drink, and I, I got a, what did I get? A raspberry margarita, and it was massive. Like, <laughs> it was so big. And the guy brought him out, and he was like, I'm just learning how to make these, so like, hopefully they're okay. And I took the first sip and I was like, I feel like I just took a shot of tequila. And then I had like a whole tequila lake <laughs> to drink because I wasn't going to waste it. And I am feeling good. And I'm about to go outside and read because it's like 80 degrees today. It's beautiful. But before I go out, and just because I felt like talking, you know, I felt like chit-chatting. I thought I'd let you know I'm 100 pages into Final Girls. Hello. So I just wrapped this vlog up, actually, and I went to start editing and realized that lovely inebriated Aspen did not tell you a single thing about what Final Girls is even about. So now I have to make up for my past self and come on and tell you. Final girls, we are following the perspective. Our main character, she is a final girl. She survived a massacre out at a cabin that she was at with a bunch of her friends. She was the only one to survive. And she actually does not have any recollection of the event. She does not remember what happened. So she's kind of just living her life with this blank space you know, knowing she's this like famous final girl, but not wanting to be a final girl. She doesn't want to associate herself with that title. She really just wants nothing to do with it. And in this society, she is one of three like very famous final girls that the media like really latched onto. And one of the other final girls tried to reach out to her at some point and kind of befriend her and try to like help her through everything process her emotions, her feelings about the event, and our girl kind of shut her down and was like, no, like, I'm not a final girl. I don't want to be a final girl. I'm, I'm not interested in this. When we pick up with her, she is living with her boyfriend. She's running a baking business. So our girl is still friends with the police officer that rescued her from the cabin, from the killer that she survived. They meet up on occasion and they have a meeting right towards the beginning of this book where he tells our main girl that the final girl that tried to befriend her has committed suicide. So she's now dead and our main girl is kind of just trying to deal with that process, her feelings about it. And then out of nowhere, this third final girl shows up at our main girl's apartment one day. And this is weird because she's never met our main girl. After she survived her event, she kind of went into like hiding, isolation. Nobody could find her. She was just like completely off the grid. And once our final girl commits suicide, this girl who was living off the grid decides to come meet our main character and basically just like check up on her, see if she's okay. And they kind of get into this series of events where they kind of form a friendship. We're watching our main girl kind of start to remember bits and pieces about what happened to her. Because again, like I said, she has no recollection of the events 
that happened that she survived. That's kind of the story of it is you've got this group of final girls that kind of band together because they're all final girls portrayed by the media and they need to be there for each other, whatever, you get it. So that's the general synopsis of the book that I completely forgot to tell you about. So with all that being said, I'll send it back to fund me from a few weeks ago. So far, I'm not like overly entertained by the book. Ashley and I have been just chatting all of our theories. And at this point, I feel like our theories are better than the actual book, but we're having a great time. Well, I'm having a great time. <laughs> Hopefully she's having a great time too, but it's been fun chatting. And I am seeing a lot of similarities between this and Final Girl Support Group by Grady Hendrix, which is the only other like final girl trope book that I think I've read. And Ashley reminded me that apparently there was some, some beef going on <laughs> at the time or like a while ago about these two books and their similarities. So that's really interesting. I was like, ooh, I love drama. I love to hear about it. This is so fun and exciting. I, what am I even talking about? It was probably a bad idea to turn the camera on right now, but we're just going with it. I'm noticing some similarities. I'm not like super bored, but I'm not also I'm also not like really that entertained. And I think that's <laughs> I think that's really all I have to say. I feel like I probably just wanted to talk to the camera for a while, but that's my update at 100 pages in. We are going to read another 100 pages today. Hopefully, I can manage to get to our next stopping point. So, I'm gonna go get into these pages. I'll probably just give you an update at the end. I don't really know why I'm updating you at page 100. It's not even halfway through the book, not even close, but I don't know. Good morning. Last night, I finished Final Girls by Riley Sager and it didn't go super well. I decided on a two star rating for this. So let's really hope that I was so wrong when I did my guess about which ones would be my favorite because I thought this would be my second favorite out of the four books. So this vlog could go really downhill if I was actually correct. I only updated at page 100 and I'm gonna be really super honest. I have no idea what I told you at page 100, but basically my struggle throughout this whole book and what I was telling Ashley is like, it's just so boring. I finished it and the ending wasn't bad, but it does not make up for the fact that the rest of this book had me wanting to go to sleep. It was so freaking boring. Like I could barely get through my pages each day because I was just like, like they talk about baking constantly. And I swear every time I got to a point where she started talking about baking again, I almost fell asleep. Like my eyes just could not read it. I didn't care. And it doesn't mean anything. So like, why is it half the book about baking? I don't care. And then there's like a lot of other random shit that they do that I was just like, this is so stupid. And I don't really feel like it's gonna actually play into the story a whole lot. Nothing happens until page 300. Like nothing that actually matters happens until page 300. And then you hit page 300 and you get like the first twist. And I liked that twist, I didn't guess it. So I was like, okay, cool. We're finally like gonna wrap this up. Like we're finally getting to the actual storyline. That twist happens, I was intrigued, but then it should have been that twist and then like five or 10 pages. But it felt like after that twist, the story like relating to that twist, just went on and on and on. And I was like, okay, can we wrap this up, please? And then there's a final twist right at the end, which I clocked from about page 20, not even. Almost immediately when I started this book, I had this idea and Ashley and I talked about it on the very first day of our buddy read because like something about the situation immediately, I was like, there's no way this wasn't involved in that situation, like whatever. That was the final twist on the book. So then I was just like, okay, cool. So I also guessed one of the main twists. Overall, I just, I didn't really like it. Like I don't dislike it enough to give it a one star, but like 
it was so boring. Like the twists were not that great. Like again, I didn't guess the first one and I liked it, but it wasn't like shocking really. And then the second one, I, I guessed almost immediately upon starting the book. So I don't know. I feel like maybe final girl tropes are not for me, but I also know that like this was written first and then Grady Hendrix final girl support group came out. I didn't really like that one either and they are pretty similar. So I don't know if every like final girl book follows this same layout, but maybe they're just not for me and I shouldn't read any more of them. Unfortunately, final girls is a two star. Let's hope I actually end up liking one of the other ones better. I'm checking in because I started the last time I lied today and I'm now about 50% of the way into it. Now that I'm halfway through and I know sort of what's going on, I can share that with you. So in this book, we are following a woman. She's in her late 20s now. She's an artist. We learn right away that she went to a summer camp when she was a young teenager, like 13 years old and something happened while she was there. We learned that the something that happened is that the three girls that she was sharing a bunk with at camp went missing and they were never found. They obviously like a few years after their disappearance, they were all pronounced dead and nobody knows what happened. And so we pick up with her, like I said, in her late twenties, she's at a gallery or a showing, like she has a, what is it called? I don't know what it's called in the art world, but like her work is being shown at a gallery. And so she's there and she gets brought to this woman and it is the former runner of the summer camp. And she invites our main girl to lunch and tells her at lunch that she wants to reopen the summer camp because it closed after those three girls went missing. She wants to reopen the camp and she wants our main girl to go and be like a counselor. She wants her to be like the art teacher. So our main girl decides like, okay, I'm gonna go back, hopefully get some closure. Maybe I can find some clues as to what happened to my three friends 15 years ago. So we're getting alternating chapters, or not necessarily always alternating, but we have two types of chapters. So one is her present day at the camp working as a counselor, and then the other chapters are flashbacks. And those ones are a lot shorter, but they're just like mini couple page chapter flashbacks from her time at the camp when she was 13, the year that the girls went missing. So present day, she doesn't know what happened to them and she's kind of looking into it, trying to find clues. She finds a diary from one of the girls, things like that. And then also there seems to be someone trying to torment her saying like, I, you're a liar, we were watching you type of thing. So far, I'm very intrigued. I'm actually really enjoying it. I like the summer camp setting. I'm liking just like this mystery. It's not like overly fast paced or anything, but it's not feeling slow at all. It's keeping me entertained. I've been trying really hard not to think about what the twist could be because I'm really bummed that I had guessed part of the twist for Final Girls. And I like to be surprised. Like when I read thrillers, I'm really not trying to guess because I think it takes a lot of fun out of the books if you're sleuthing the whole time you're reading, trying to come up with it. So I'm trying really hard to not think at all about what twists could be. I'm just being entertained. We have the owner of the camp, the director of the camp. Her One of her sons was actually like the only suspect they ever had for the disappearance. And it's because our main girl basically like accused him of harming the missing girls. And so now they're both back at the camp because they like, they never had any evidence that he did anything. So he wasn't arrested or anything. So 
now they're both back at the camp and everybody's kind of trying to like forgive each other for all of the craziness that happened 15 years ago. I'm enjoying it, like I said, so far. I've got 50% left. Hello. So I, it's been a few hours, but I have now finished The Last Time I Lied by Riley Sager. So I'm here to give you my final thoughts. I ended up giving this one four stars. I enjoyed it. I was a little like underwhelmed. I thought I was gonna end up giving it three stars because when I got to the end where they started like revealing some of the twists, I was super underwhelmed. I was like, okay, this is like really mild, really silly. Like I was not really into it. So I was thinking I was gonna end up giving it three stars because I still had a good experience reading it. It never felt slow, I never was bored. Like I just cruised right on through this one. It didn't feel like there was unnecessary stuff going on just to extend the story. So the reading experience was a solid three star middle of the road. And even with those twists, I was a little disappointed, but not enough for me to be like, okay, well now it gets two stars. But then the final chapter added that little bit of something that I needed. And I actually really liked the way that that last twist was handled. And so I, I then decided to give it four stars because the twists, like I said, they ended up not being dis as disappointing as I thought they were gonna be. At the end of it all, could you have kind of guessed it? Maybe, but I really kept myself so far from thinking about anything. Like I was just like, no matter what happens, I am not gonna think past what's happening on this page. Like I am not gonna try to guess anything. And so each twist was kind of not exciting. The last twist was exciting. The, the first two were like, meh, again, like I said, overall, a good reading experience, four stars, definitely prefer this to Final Girls. So I'm really curious to see how the next two books are gonna go since those are the two I anticipated I would like the least. Hello, so I am checking in because I started and am now 50% of the way through Lock Every Door. Now I can give you a synopsis and initial thoughts. In this book, we are following a woman who is really down on her luck. We know that she comes from a family where She's, she's had a lot of bad things happen to her. Her parents are dead. Her sister is missing and has been for many years. Like she comes from some tragedy already. And now she is basically broke and she loses her job and she comes home from her job and walks in on her boyfriend cheating on her. So she obviously leaves her boyfriend and now she's jobless and homeless, which is a great combination. So she sees a listing for an apartment sitter for an apartment in a place called the Bartholomew, which is this like really like mysterious, fancy like apartment complex. There's a lot unknown about the place. Basically the only thing that is known about the place is that it's sort of also bathed in tragedy. Like a lot of people have died there. A lot of really weird things have happened there. She applies for the job. She goes in for an interview and she finds out that the apartment she would be in, the previous owner of that apartment has died. And so at the Bartholomew, you they never want their units to sit empty and so if a unit is not filled they will hire these apartment sitters for like three months at a time to live in the apartment and basically just like take care of it until they get a new tenant full time so that's what she's doing she's living in this apartment she's got a three-month contract and she makes friends with another apartment sitter in the building. Right after they kind of start connecting with each other, this girl tells her she's a little scared of the building. And all of a sudden the next day, this girl just disappears without a trace. She doesn't tell anybody where she's going. She just like in the middle of the night, packed up all of her stuff and left. And so now our girl is trying to figure out where this other apartment sitter went and also digging into like the history of the Bartholomew 
and all of the different tragic things that have happened at this apartment building throughout its lifetime. So far, I'm enjoying it. I got the audio from Libby, so I've been listening this morning because I've been working, but I wanted to pause for a second and give you an update since I'm at 50%, but I am enjoying it. What I'll say is my reservations going into this one, like I said at the beginning of this vlog, were that in my head, I thought this was kind of like a haunted house story, which is the same feeling I have about Home Before Dark. But this one is more just like, the things that are happening aren't like the typical things in a haunted house. Like she hears a scream and she thinks she hears someone downstairs. Like it's not like she walks into a room and is like, oh, my furniture's moving. That's fun. You know, the typical garbage that haunted house books always have. So I like that the kind of like eerie, scary things happening aren't as like in your face haunted story-esque. They're more just like, I would be freaked out too if I heard a scream. Like it, it doesn't come from her apartment. It just comes from somewhere. Like, yeah, that's freaky or like, if I think someone's walking around, like, yeah, that's freaky. But there's also ways to rationally explain that. Like, oh, maybe it's just my neighbor because you're in an apartment building where you can hear people all the time versus like, I don't know how in the hell these people try to rationally explain that their furniture's moving by itself. Like, I don't think there's a rational explanation for that whatsoever. That's kind of where I'm at so far. I'm enjoying it. I like that it is not the typical haunted story that I thought it was gonna be. Again, I'm trying really, really hard not to think about it at all, about what the twists could be. I feel like I've heard people say in this one that a lot of people guess the twist like really, really early on. I have no thoughts because I've tried to have no thoughts. So like, I don't have a clue what I think is gonna be the answer, but I'm excited to find out. So I'm happy to report that I am enjoying it. Maybe this vlog won't be as much of a disaster as I thought it could end up being, but there's still 50% of the book to go. So if we do get into the typical type of haunted story, it's gonna probably go downhill really fast. I'm going to keep listening throughout the rest of my day here and I should definitely finish it later today. Hello. So I'm checking in because I have now finished Lock Every Door by Riley Sager and I still have to think about it a little bit more, but this could potentially be my favorite Riley Sager book so far. This might dethrone House Across the Lake. But again, I'm gonna keep marinating. I'll make a final decision when I finish all of the books and I do a final ranking, but I really enjoyed this one. And I'm giving it four stars because it's not like a favorite of all time or anything like that, but really solid four star thriller. The twists, the explanations for everything, I really enjoyed. This one went dark and I really, really liked that. I just have to say like the last maybe 30% of this book where when it really picks up and you really start to get the explanation for everything, I was just feeling so much internal rage about the situation at hand. Oh, I was just, I was angry reading the end of this book and it was like, it, that's a good thing because it elicited some kind of emotion from me, which is the point of reading. I want to feel something. It, even if that emotion is anger, I still want to feel it. And like, I was just so angry at what was going on. And I felt so terribly, like for our main character and some of the other people involved in the story. I really think this was so well done. I loved the twist. And I think that's what I have to say. Like the only critique I would give is right around the 50, so I checked in at 50%. From 50% to like 70%, I was kind of getting to like, okay, let's get to the point. Like I'm getting a little bored now. Cause it was really just kind of this like, this main, our main character like playing detective, trying to figure out what's going on. But as soon as like the pieces were all put together, for her to be able to make this discovery, that's like when the action really kicks up and things got very exciting. And knowing like what's happening and everything, it was just like, 
uh, I wanted to scream. I just think it was really, really well done. So very much enjoyed. One of my favorites, again, I'm going to have to make a final call when I do my ranking. Until then, I'm going to allow myself uh, the opportunity to not make a final decision right now to say if this is going to be ranked above like Survive the Night and House Across the Lake, but super solid. I'm so pleased. Again, especially like because I had really low expectations going into this one because I thought it was like a haunted house story. The way it's done is so different and just like not the standard like carbon copy cutout of a typical haunted house book. So I wasn't wanting to like rage at the stupid characters the way I usually do in haunted house books. Instead, I wanted to rage at the explanation for everything happening but in the best way because like I loved how it was done. I think it was a great idea to put into this book, but it was just, it's one of those twists where like, you're so, you're so angry. I know I've said that a million times already, but like, oh, it's so hard to talk about without spoiling anything. Those are my thoughts about Lock Every Door. And that means we only have one book left for this vlog, Home Before Dark. I am checking in to tell you that I am now about 50% of the way into Home Before Dark so I can give you a synopsis, initial feelings, all the good stuff, right? So Home Before Dark, we are following the perspective of a young woman and we learn that during her childhood at one point in time, her family moved into this strange house and they fled only like two or three weeks after moving in. It was all very mysterious, very weird. And then after they fled the house, her father wrote a book explaining what happened to them at this house and basically saying that the house was haunted. But our young girl has no memory of those events and believes that the entire book is basically a complete lie, a complete like money grab that her father wrote. And so we are following her now as an adult. Her father has just passed away and she finds out that her father has left her his entire estate which included the house that they fled from, which she was very surprised to learn because she was under the impression that they did not have the house anymore. So she finds out the house is now hers and she decides to go back to the house and basically like investigate and see if she can figure out what really happened. So that's one of the storylines. And then we also have secondary chapters so they're alternating back and forth and the other chapters are actually chapters from the book that the father wrote about their time in the house that's the general synopsis of the book and what i can say 50 percent in is i am not liking it even a little bit because this is a haunted house story and not just one but two because both perspectives are like, things are going missing, lights are turned on in the middle of the night, music is playing out of nowhere. All the typical haunted house bullshit that I cannot stand. I want to rage. I hate it, honestly. I'm not liking it even a tiny bit. I don't really understand why this main character is like, insisting that the father's story is a lie when she doesn't seem to actually remember a lot of what happened anyway so how the hell does she know if it's actually a lie or not i don't know i just don't care i don't like the main character that's the 50 percent update not going well we'll see what the explanation for everything will be at the end if it's going to be like a lot of other haunted house books and the explanations we end up getting at the end. But yeah, those are my thoughts as of right now. I'm not enjoying it at all. This is the one that I see more than any other listed as people's favorite 
of Riley Sagers. I'm not gonna be surprised if I end up rating this one the lowest out of all of his books, especially after getting 50% in, because I had a little bit of hope going in because I was like, maybe it's gonna be like my perception of lock every door, where as soon as I started reading, I was like, oh, okay, this is not like your typical haunted story. No, this is exactly like your typical haunted story, at least up to 50%, so we'll see. I mean, I'm not, I, I hate both storylines equally because they're literally both the same exact thing happening at two different points in time. Like that's so boring. I'm gonna finish it hopefully tonight because if I have to drag this crap into another day, I'm gonna be cranky tomorrow too. What a way to end the vlog, huh? Wouldn't it be funny if I come back for my final update and I'm like, actually, I was wrong, but uh, we'll see. That's all I have to say for now. Hello, checking in to tell you that I did finish Home Before Dark last night and I'm about to present probably one of my most unpopular opinions to the internet. I have a lot of them, but I gave this one star. I hated everything about this book from start to finish. I thought that the twists were stupid. I feel like haunted house books follow a formula and it's like the explanation, the types of twists that happen, they're always the same. They are literally always the same. I could tell you every other haunted house book I've read probably that has a very similar twist at the end. I think they're so stupid. Do something different please. Purely because I was doing this video, I wanted to read his entire backlist, but like going forward, unless I already own the book, I need to avoid every haunted house book because I cannot tell you a single haunted house book I have ever read that I actually enjoyed. They drive me crazy with the stupid characters pretending like it's all fine and oh maybe I forgot and oh what a coincidence that this happened and oh my, wow this house has a really dark history well who would have guessed who would have guessed that this haunted house has a dark history full of murder like they just they're so boring the characters are always stupid I don't like the way that authors do twists with haunted house books I just dislike everything about haunted house stories and about this book as a result. I was trying to read his entire backlist, so don't come for me just because I knew I didn't like haunted house and then I read this book and I hated it. I know that and this is like officially I'm out with the exception of I think the only book that I own physically that is still like a haunted house type story is How to Sell a Haunted House by Grady Hendrix which I will read because I bought it and it's same with this one, like I bought it and I bought it well before I had read a lot of the haunted house books over the last maybe year or so that have really turned me away from the trope as a whole. But yeah, that's my thoughts on Home Before Dark. So boring. I stand by, there was no need for us to have both the present day happenings and the chapters from this book. Literally no need for it whatsoever. I don't know, that's really all I have. This is my problem because I do like Riley Sager, obviously. Four of his six books have been four star reads for me. And I've noticed that those four are more thriller based where the two that I didn't like were more horror. So I think he just does thrillers a lot better than he does horror because I feel like his thrillers typically bring something kind of unique to them whereas the horror books rely on well-established horror tropes so I like his thrillers significantly better than his horror. I'm sorry I know that's a really harsh opinion but it's my opinion and I'm allowed to have it. With that being said that's the last book for the vlog so I can give you like my final ranking now. So at the beginning of this I thought my ranking would be Home Before Dark at the bottom Lock Every Door, Final Girls, second, and then The Last Time I Lied, first, as far as the four reading for this video. And then I also assumed that Survive the Night and House Across the Lake would remain my top two books. So that was my initial prediction, right? Now my actual ranking is obviously still Home Before Dark at the bottom. Then Final Girls, sixth place, Fifth place, Final Girls. Fourth place, I'm gonna put The Last Time I Lied. Third place, I would put Survive the Night, which I don't have a physical copy of. 
And then honestly, I don't know if I could tell you which one I would rank first between these two. I really enjoyed both of these and I don't really want to pick. I feel like if I had read House Across the Lake at the same time, like for this video, I would have a clearer opinion on it. But I just am remembering from like the time that I read it a year ago. And so at that time, I know I really enjoyed it. And I know I really enjoyed this one right now, but I can't remember like if I would have read House Across the Lake right now, maybe I would have a clearer depiction of ranking one above the other. So for now, we're just gonna say these two are tied and that's the video. Quite a roller coaster we had there with a one star, a two star, and two four stars, but I'm glad I did it. I'm excited for his new book. As long as it's not a haunted house story, I am excited for it, I guess I should say. I don't even know what it's about. I just know that it's like the only one left, I think is the title and it has a house on the cover, but I think it's more of a murder mystery than haunted house. There you go. That is the video. That's the end of this vlog. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know down below what your favorite and least favorite are. I always like to see the opinions. I know that Home Before Dark is a lot of people's favorites, so please don't be mad at me for having the opinion that I do. I'm just me. If you love that book, that's fantastic. Obviously, I really still enjoy Riley Sager. I wish I could say I love every book, but I will keep supporting him because honestly, like, as long as you've written one or two books that I really enjoyed, I'll read everything you write. Even if there's going to be some that I might not like, that's just how it goes. Not every book is going to work for me and that's just fine. So that's all. I'm wrapping this up. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.